Hi traders, welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this is a live webinar where we're going to take a look at the Keltner channels. The broader topic is bounce and break setups. One of the great tools for that is the Keltner channels uh, and uh, we'll be focusing on that in, in general, but also of course uh, looking at the markets. We could take a look at the uh, Forex, CFDs, uh, commodities, and of course stock indices. So feel free to uh, reach out if a particular instrument is you know in your focus or interesting for you and we can take a look at that before we do that though please uh, be aware of these two disclaimers the first one explained the fact that the live webinar is shown to a global audience but is not necessarily suitable for everyone please visit admiralmarketsglobal.com select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity to find out if it is suitable for you Second of all, please note that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, so before we take a look at the charts, just wanted to make you aware of the Admiral Markets website. There are a lot of good things here. Uh, you know, things we don't really look regularly at are like this glossary, for instance. You can check it out in the education sec section here, and you can see uh, not only that, but risk management, seminars, webinars, uh, articles, and courses at the bottom. So there's really a lot of good things to discover. Uh, so each time we start a webinar, I just want to highlight one part of the website so that you slowly but surely discover all of these, uh, you know, assets and, and parts. Uh, because it is a bit overwhelming, as I say often at the beginning, there are a lot of tabs here, uh, but do take your time to go through them and uh, you'll discover, you know, a lot of uh, value uh, in this website here. Uh, and you can see more info about regulations and, and stuff like that. And this is very useful if you start out to get an idea about all the terminologies. All right. So that's a good starting spot uh, for your trading um, and uh, definitely recommend that. Now, one of the other useful tools, we can maybe take a look at that, and then we'll take a look at the charts, is this uh, market heat map. All right, and uh, that's always useful to take a look at which instruments have been moving the most recently. And if you scroll lower, you'll see the currency pairs that have been the, the top movers. If you look at the bottom, you will see volatility. If you look on the left, you will see directional movement. All right, so that depends basically what you're uh, looking for. Uh, if you're looking for a trend, take a look at the percentage up and down for more info on that. If you're looking for more info regarding you know, what pair is, is moving the most, then uh, looking at the bottom scale makes the most sense. All right. All right, or if you're looking for a combination, of course, you can filter out some of those currency pairs like that too. For instance, uh, pound yen has a lot of volatility, but is also in a, it has a strong uptrend at this moment, right? Euro yen had a lot of volatility, but really didn't move up or down. So you can use a combination as well. But Euro New Zealand, a lot of volatility, but had some do decent downside movement. Or perhaps you're looking for a pair that doesn't have that much volatility, but maybe more in the middle category. So you can think about the euro pound or the euro dollar or, um, or the pound cat those are showing decent volatility in the middle and some direction but not as much as pound yen right so that's how you can use that info to um, select some of these currencies all right so let's move on and take a look at the charts let's start with the uh, euro dollar and uh Yesterday I was talking about, of course, in, in the video, you can take a look at technical analysis on the website and you can see uh, on Monday is my video, what I think is, you know, your dollar, pound, dollar, dollar, yen, what we can expect from that. And hopefully you should be seeing the charts now or sometime soon. All right. So hopefully you see them now. And uh, basically, from my point of view, the, your dollar is at a critical 
uh, bounce or break spot. All right, we got the support trend line here. We have price trying to uh, basically break through the Keltner or bounce. So it's a pretty important level. If price does break through it, we could see a breakout to the downside to the S1. And then if price breaks below the S1, all the way down to the S2. That's a pretty sizable gap. We're seeing that the weekly pivot points are showing uh, a lot of space due to the fact that last week there was some good movement. So we see uh, you know, these, these pivot points a bit wider. These are weekly pivot points from the Admiral Market uh, MT4 Supreme Edition plugin. So uh, that there's our 60 extra features, including the Keltner channels and this weekly pivot point and this mini terminal are just a few of them. So there is some good space if price breaks through 117.25. What I would be looking for basically is price to fall down, make a bear flag, and then continue. I don't have my drawing to open. One second, let me do that right now. I thought I had it already open, but I forgot that I actually restarted my PC halfway today. So I forgot that uh, the drawing tool that was open is not open anymore. All right, there we go. So here we go. You should be seeing now a red line soon with a red arrow and uh, a bear flag continuation. That's what I'll be looking for for downside. Upside, basically at this moment, I would think either a bullish candle that can break above the weekly pivot point at 117. 60 probably a bullish candle on the four hour chart that can break through and close above that break through this trend line as well i think would deserve the attention of a, a potential long there in my view right it's something that i would definitely think about and uh the target is in my view 119.25 and uh 120. now 119 120 119.25 is not something that will necessarily um reached in one go we have you know the keltner standing in the way here all right so anytime price approach approaches that that could be a bouncer break spot you can see here how price pierced through it and we had a great breakout good momentum right here you can see that price broke through but then had a bullish candle close above it again indicated the reversal in fact here we had a break through the keltner and continuation right so Keltner is very good for break or bounce, break or bounce spots. Here we, we failed to pierce through it, engulfing twins at the Keltner, and boom, look at this reversal, right? So it is, it is a very useful tool to basically, uh, how do you say it, like measure or find key decisive bounce or break spots. You can use it as a first tool that you, that's the first tool you look at or you can use it as a, as a tool of confluence right so you know in my view it is something that i primarily use as a tool of confluence uh, i don't wait for price only to get to these to this counter channels i mean you in theory could just only wait till price gets there and it's one way of it's like a it's like building a strategy in this way it's not how I trade. I, I do use it more as an extra tool. So if price does get to uh, the Keltner, then it's an it's a extra factor that I take into account, right? If, it, if price is not close to it, then, or it's, it's maybe going back to the moving averages, it's something that I could still use, right? But it's, it's like an extra tool of confluence for my trading, but everyone will use it differently, of course. So, from the four hour point of view, you can see the price is uh, below the, the average, the moving average. So that's already indicating some kind of downtrend at this moment, as you can see. But if price does break above it, then there is some space to the top. And that's a new decisive moment. Price could either break or make a new bounce there. All right. Same thing for the support Keltner. If price breaks through it, right, then it depends. How does it close at the Keltner? If there's a good close, there could be an immediate breakout. If it closes, then bounces like this, it could indicate more choppiness because this is so far a pretty choppy correction. So how price responds to this is an important factor. So when price breaks here, uh, there could be a small continuation to the S1, 
but it depends. That's why I said I want to break bear flag continuation on this uh, one hour chart. It has to do with the fact that there's support here that could send it back up again. If price breaks and it goes sideways, then uh, there's a good chance of a continuation. Now this sideways does not have to be on the four hour chart. This could be on the hourly chart or a 30 minute chart. Right? So that's what I'm looking for for downside. For upside, break above this resistance trend line, weekly pivot point, there should be some upside continuation possible. And then we're at a new kind of talking point, decision point, either a bounce or a continuation breakout. So when price does break, and it's also good to wait for bull flag here, in that case, a continuation is also more likely. All right. So that is kind of like the scenarios what I see at this moment. So when I look like at this kind of roadmap, right, uh, I'm thinking primarily about two trades. The downside trade, in my view, is most interesting upon the bearish breakout. So somewhere around here, where I have the orange circle. The upside break, in my view, could already be interesting when we have a candle, four-hour candle close above the weekly pivot point, where I have the green circle. Now, yeah, that, this is my vision or my kind of plan. Everyone is going to, of course, have a different uh, plan. Is going to have also a different preference of which part of that plan to trade. Some traders prefer trading bounces, right, rather than uh, than breaks. Some traders might rather trade, for instance, the break, pullback, and continuation, for instance. So, you know, this this is also depends very much on our personal vision. Uh, but as long as you, I think, understand, you know, the, the key decision zones, understand patterns, understand the market structure by using trend support resistance and patterns uh, and understand how, how price uses those and then builds a kind of a path of least resistance, then you'll be able to analyze the charts with more, you know, clarity, I, I think, personally, this is my belief. And uh, you'll, I think, be able to, to pick trades within that roadmap. And I think if you practice it, you should get better at it. All right. That's my vision, at least. That's what I've been uh, doing, and uh, this is my way of analyzing and trading that analysis. And uh, Keltner is, is a useful tool for analyzing and trading break and bounce setups within that roadmap. All right, so now with regard to... Uh, let's see, the bigger picture, it is an important spot too because basically what I'm looking for is whether this wave 4 is finished or not, basically. All right? So this wave 4 could be finished. In this case, this could be a wave 5, right? Or is this all kind of part of a bigger correction and is the wave 4 going to finish later on? A part of that clarity, you know, that part of that answer will rely on whether this is a wave 1, 2, 3, or five, or is this an ABC? Because if this is an ABC, an expansion of the wave four is likely. Whereas price bounces here and makes a wave five, then that could finish a wave one of five, five of one of a bigger wave five. So I should say a wave five of a wave one of a wave five. And price can go down for a green wave two and then go up for a green wave three, all within that red five. If we get that last push up. All right. So it is an important kind of, and you know, not everyone is a big fan of wave patterns, but just knowing the basics of waves could be beneficial in some cases, right? Not that you need to be an expert wave analyst, but just knowing the basics. You know, in some cases, is quite useful uh, in in 
decision moments like this with your dollar. And you know, you don't have to know the all the details necessarily to, to understand that this could be A, B, C, or one, two, three. And you already have a heads up and a, you know an advantage in understanding the market structure, right? Just using simple things like that without going into details. All right, that's my my kind of vision on waves. Just use them when it's practical. All right, and uh, and patterns in general are just a very very good tool for understanding uh, the market structure, including wave patterns. Although uh, it is not a must, it is of course something that is beneficial if you do it in, in a practical way, I think. You can also become a hardcore wave analyst. Uh, it's also fine. It's just that, uh, you know, it's, it's not something that everyone uh, must do. It's not, it's something that um, either, either you really like a lot, then it makes sense. But if, if you're not a big fan, you can still use it in a very practical way and, and beneficial way. All right, so that's my vision on, on the euro dollar. That's why this spot is interesting and important at the same time. And that's why if we get a push up, I would expect still a three wave down because I think that this could be a wave two. This could be wave one and this could be wave two. All right. All right, so moving on to the pound. So pound is still in a, a massive range. We had a breakout here, but all, all in all, price is just still in between these purple lines in between support and resistance basically and now it's approaching resistance so if we're looking for a continuation of the resistance up in here and basically uh, we can you know try to see if there's some kind of reversal patterns in here there could be one more push down just based on this range of course the range could break it will will it will eventually break to the up or downside. The time frame I am using to measure this breakout is a daily chart. I need a daily candle to clearly break through resistance or support with the candle close near the high or low in that breakout, near the high for a bullish breakout, near the low for a bearish breakout before I would even consider trading the breakout. I would not consider trading the breakout on lower time frames due to the fact that on lower time frames price might make that push up a little bit above it and then boom fall down like that and ultimately crash because of the weight of this resistance or the weight of the support right so it's not something i want to do on an intraday time frame because just this the risk the price will respect this range it's lasted for uh, a whole two months almost or, or one and a half months so um you know close to two months now so you know these things can last long and it doesn't have to happen this week that the breakout happens. That's why I'm not looking for intraday uh, breakouts on, on these time frames. I really want to see the breakout on a daily chart. On this time frame, if anything, if price does get up to resistance zone or down to support zone, if anything, it could be actually worth looking for a bounce in my view. Uh, first back to halfway and then eventually maybe to the opposite side. All right, so the weekly pivot point will be the first target of this uh, downside if it goes up and then makes that reversal. Then later on, maybe the extension to S1 or the very bottom of that range. So my view, this R1 and R2 and that zone in between there, generally speaking, more of a reversal territory or bounce territory. And uh, basically, I think four hour, probably four hour, time frame is, is a good one for reversal. All right, so dollar yen. Dollar yen had a, had a bounce at that 38.2 fib. I'm not sure if you maybe checked out my wave analysis yesterday. I was already you know indicating that that 38.2 fib could be a, a bouncing spot and a bit of a struggle for this downtrend. Uh, of course, you could always have an immediate break, but um, I was leaning towards a bounce because of this bottom, the 38.252, and uh, I moved back to, to this, uh, the top of this channel, in fact, which, you know, depending on how you draw it, it, it almost reached there. It also went back to the weekly pivot point, for that matter, and it's staying in this, this channel for the moment. Now, there are two things that could happen. Is that One is that I think that if price retests this Keltner, there could be a support line like this, 
If it breaks that support line, there could be a breakout down to this 55th. Alternatively, if uh, price breaks above this channel, there could be a little bit of a retracement up to the R1. And then that still could be a resistance spot, by the way. So all in all, I think the structure is still leaning towards a bearish continuation. Why? Because I think the 38.2 fib is quite shallow. I think that a deeper fib, like the 50, 61.8, is more likely in my view if price breaks above the r1 though you never know then i'll go with the flow and there could be a breakout to the r2 and who knows maybe finally the breakout above the bigger 115 resistance and in that case maybe the 38.2 fib is is all it uh it you know all the retracement that um, we have and uh, up it goes right so you want to be flexible with these things i think a deeper fib is more likely Therefore, I think that if price manages to break, I think what we need is some kind of support trend line like this, then breaks that support trend line, there could be that move down to the 55th. Or if it makes it bounce up, that the R1 could also be the turning spot for that move down to the 55th. But if it does break above the R1, then yes, it could retest the double top. So this is, this is my roadmap. And... Uh, now I'm just waiting for the, the trades, you know, the, the trade setups to arrive that fit my vision at least. And uh, one of those would be either a move up to R1 and a bounce or breakout. But the breakout, in my view, would happen only uh, basically. I mean, this would have been a, a trade that was worth trading, but that's behind us. Why? Because it was at the weekly pivot point, at the long-term moving average, at the trend line, at the Keltner. All right, but now... It's, it's testing the support. So could there be a little bit of a bounce up? Yes. Is it good to short at this moment? I personally don't think so. I would rather wait for price to make a little bit of a reaction like this and then try to trade that breakout. Or if it makes a little bit of upside like that and I see some weakness in here, maybe even trying to trade it before it breaks out. Right? That's a little bit more risky perhaps because you never know, it could be a breakout here too. All right, but those are a couple of ideas that are in my mind with regard to dollar yen. All right, so those are the majors. Uh, we still got plenty of time left. So, so anyone have a preference? We still got some some interesting currency pairs remaining, some major crosses to go. So you know we'll we'll go into those. But if you have a preference, you know just let me know. Uh, and we'll do that. All right. I see some comments already. Angel doing pretty well. I hope you too. I hope all of you had a good weekend and, uh, and thank you. Thank you, Angel, for those very kind words. Really appreciate it. And it definitely gladly help there. Um, for sure. I mean, we want you to, we want everyone, you know, to, to, to trade as, as good as they can and definitely absolutely try to to do our best with with helping uh and gold i know you love gold let's take a look at that right now and then we'll take a look at pound yen and pound dollar all right let me use a different template here uh let's see all right all right right but choppy it's remains choppy in fact difficult it is it is basically showing higher highs and higher lows but the angle is extremely weak and uh the dips have seen upside but as soon as we get a higher high it falls so there's really no legs you know underneath this this uh, commodity at this moment and uh, it's uh, it's a difficult one to trade uh, it's it's really if, if you're looking for upside it is not or trading upside it is uh, a bit of a headache right but uh, yeah let's take a look at this a little bit more deeper for the moment double bottom choppy channel well, if it breaks this channel, 
I think we should expect more downside and we should see price fall down to minus 272 target, maybe to minus 61.8 target. And maybe even an extension, right? All the way to this bottom, basically. Or close to this bottom, like this. That's ultimately where price, where I think price could fall to before it makes a pretty uh, substantial bounce. So that is the perspective, I think at least, if it breaks this, this channel. Now, it didn't break the channel yet, although yesterday there were bearish, bearish candle, totally erasing the bullish candle before that. Let's take a look at the weekly. Weekly has a bullish candle though. So we gotta be careful, I think personally, um, about shorting due to that bullish candle on the weekly chart. And I would not sell now personally. No, I think it's still in the channel. So, and it's still rounding like this. So I wouldn't be surprised if eventually we get a momentum break like this that could go to the 61.8 fib and then it moves down lower. Because mind you, don't forget that from my point of view, at least the 50 and 61.8 fib are still strong resistance spots. I'm expecting this to be a first correction, this to be a second correction. And down we go for a third correction before price starts to move up in a long-term uptrend. My, my view, right? My two cents. So could there be a pop-up hit resistance and move down? I still think it's a viable option in my view. But it doesn't have to. If it breaks this channel, I don't want to be blinded by the fact that uh, I would be waiting all the time for a move up here. If it's a channel like this, so choppy and, and slow, and price breaks to that channel, then yes, there could be an immediate break, bearish breakout. So my view, waiting for a push to below S1 or waiting for price to, to go up higher. So for the moment, if anything, I think it's more in a bullish bounce area from my point of view. It is a pattern that has played out, right? We've got bounces. We had previous, you know, a couple of bounces already. It could do that again here too. Seems a little bit more likely to me. But if it does push through the S1, then break, flag, continuation could, could occur. All right, so that's, that's my vision. Let's see. Pound dollar we already took a look at. Uh, so let's first start with the pound yen. If, if you missed that pound dollar, we can, we can uh, make a quick summary. Uh, but first, pound yen. Alrighty, so a yeah, very, very um, choppy one. It's because the dollar yen has been well. It's 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 simple, really, right? Dollar yen choppy, pound dollar choppy. So pound yen isn't going anywhere at this moment. Dollar yen has moved down slowly to the thirty-eight point two fifth. Pound dollar is in a range, so. From that point of view, not surprising that the pound yen is 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 that kind of has shows that many whipsaws in a way, right? And so so choppy. But uh, ultimately, it is an uptrend on a weekly chart with higher highs, higher lows. Daily chart too. We still don't have a lower low. For, for that matter. If anything, it's a, it's in a triangle. Still, right? So from my point of view, if it does break through support, then still got to be careful that it could bounce out the next support, which if we put a fib like this to this, could be uh, here or here. So the breakout, could be okay, but we got to be careful of these bounce spots. Alternatively, if it does break here, we could be in a bigger breakout. Until that moment, let's see, let me get rid of this fib. Well,
it could be at a resistance spot now, or it was at a resistance spot right here. With trend lines like this, and support like this. All right, there we go. So, yeah, it is at the top of the channel. It already bounced off that top of the channel. It could continue within this channel as well, uh, but it is above the weekly pivot point. So, ideally, the R1 was the bouncing spot if you were trading and analyzing this at the time. Now, it's a bit less convenient, but if we were to break below this support and the weekly pivot point, there could be maybe some continuation within this channel. All right, and uh, there could be a retest of the S1 like this and the bottom of that channel. That's one thing. If it does break above the R1, break, flag, continue, it could be something maybe to think about too. So I would think that these two pivot points are probably the, you know, pretty key spots. This upside trade is within the range. So be aware that, you know, it is trading kind of halfway a triangle. It's not the best kind of spot to trade in my view with the Admiral Keltner here. So that's why I say break, flag, continue, because that might help the odds of the setup working well. Ultimately, I think break, bigger break up or down is probably more important, all right? Because trading it either down or up is still trading within the triangle and still uh, not as uh, I think is ideal. But yeah, if I had to choose, then these two setups could occur like this. Pound dollar once, just a quick recap, basically in the range, looking in my view from a, for a bounce here on a four hour chart or uh, a breakout on a daily chart, I would need to see a breakout candle on the daily chart to the upside or breakout candle on the daily chart to the downside. On four hour charts, I would only trade this range. So that means either trading a bounce here at R1, R2 or the top and trading it back to the weekly pivot point or trading a bounce at the bottom of the range back to the middle or the top so pound still in a range kind of formation all right the uh, aussie well it has moved down a little bit, but it surely was slow, uh, this breakout. And I remember because I was live in this trade, so it seemed forever. And um, ultimately, it really didn't go too far. The target was all the time 75, and it just barely got to, it didn't even reach 75 even this week. It's just so slow. Um, but yeah, it is moving lower. And uh, slowly but surely, it's it's getting there. Now, the next kind of question is, how will price respond to this support trend line? So that's why I'm not a big fan of trading Aussie at 75, because it's at a round level. It is at the support trend line. This downside was nice, but it has reached its main target. Now, the question is, how will price respond to this support trend line? Would there be a bounce, which could happen even if this is a wave one, two, and then this is a three, right? So a bounce seems likely to me, to be honest, at this moment. Um, because of the support. And uh, price could go back to any of these FIBs, right? But typically, 61.8, 50, 78.6 FIBs are the most likely candidates. I would expect a three-wave up like this on the Aussie. So... For the moment, I would not be that interested in shorts. For the moment, on the Yazi, I think if anything, it could be a bouncing spot. Depending on if today's candle is bullish, if there's some strong bullish candle, and tomorrow is a bullish candle, two days in a row, I think uh, could spark a, a kind of a, a three wave, maybe like this, or, or even like this, to the upside, which could then be resistance again. And start a uh, reversal at uh, one of these fibs all right so if there is a breakout candle to the downside 
today any daily candle uh yes then in that case okay there could be an extension possible of this downside and um it could fall down to uh maybe to test these bottoms here like this 7370 would be the next target probably and then after that 7250. All right, Euro yen uh, is still kind of showing a little bit of a correction here. Uh, this upside was running into resistance. One of the trades that I took myself for, for downside and bouncing at the support after it fell down. We had a little bit of bounce on the four-hour chart, as you can see. I think that the yens are a little. This yen is not that interesting to me. Dollar CAD was moving up but very slowly i uh yeah got basically traded some of a couple of trades in the dollar cad i don't remember the results they were like mostly break even i think maybe one with a small win and one with a small loss or something like that trying to trade the upside but it was just so choppy that it, it really didn't pan out it didn't work out too well uh for for me but um at this moment, I think that the dollar cad a little bit indecisive as well. If it does break this channel, yes, a bigger correction like this is possible. So I think I'm on the sidelines for the dollar cad for the moment. Uh, Kiwi dollar. Probably the same at this moment. Your odd had a bigger uh, correction to the downside. It was a great breakout to the upside right here right i traded that one and i traded here here odd all right those were my two spots both trades uh went well uh it's just that i would have held this one a bit longer uh probably if if the weekend were not arriving and then i i didn't enter after the weekend unfortunately so i missed i missed this part of the trade unfortunately but okay that can happen still two good setups now uh i didn't have much faith in this upside due to that divergence of these these tops so i didn't trade the upside i also had some internet problems actually so uh, i was not able to uh, uh to to trade uh because i like to trade with the pcs not with my my um, my phone personally uh but now my internet is working fine again so as you can see we're having this webinar so that's good but but anyhow uh if anything uh, i was looking at it and if anything uh indeed a Bigger ABC is indeed not so surprising considering this divergence. All right, so upside was definitely uh, dangerous because of that. All right, we had some divergence here on the four-hour chart too between these tops. Now that does not necessarily mean that the whole upside is over. Right, because we can just be getting a bigger ABC like this and then still find upside. So we can still put a fib, probably. Let me take a look at the hourly chart. Let me check this one second. Maybe from here, you get a nice respect for the 23.6 fib. And let's put a fib from here to here in any case. All right. If this is an ABC, we would expect price to stop at the minus 272 target or the minus 61.8 target. Those two levels could be bouncing spots. All right. So that's something to, uh, to be aware of. Now, it doesn't have to bounce far. As I said, this could be a total reversal too. It doesn't have to be a retracement necessarily, right? But if it does bounce at the minus 61.8 target, then indeed uh, a continuation higher is possible. If it breaks below it, you know, then the downtrend might, or the uptrend is over and we might see a bigger kind of downside pressure. Pretty good, strong for our uh, weekly candle. So for the moment, maybe this is just a, a little bit of a correction. 
Same for the year in New Zealand, probably. All right. Let's take a look at, uh, because we've been only looking at currencies and gold, we can maybe take a look at some of the others. Uh, oil made a downside, is moving up actually, surprising. So not making that bigger correction for the moment. Pretty big wick at the bottom on the weekly candle. For the moment, looking like a breakout to the upside, if anything. Let's see how this candle holds. But uh, looking like it's moving up and breaking up. DAX, stock indices already moving up. Dow Jones already testing the high. S&P 500 already above the high. So yeah, it's kind of the same story. All right, there was a bit of a consolidation, but still upside continuing. Pretty impressive up run, pretty impressive uptrend. All right, uh, silver, nothing new, still around 17. Let's move on. Uh, take, so, take a look at some of these CFDs. All right, was taking a look at Facebook and seeing if there could be a bigger move down, but it doesn't really, didn't happen. There was an intraday break right here, but it didn't close as a gap. That intraday break didn't go anywhere before actually it started to move up and it then broke above this resistance as well. Break, pullback, continue, it seems. Google making a correction here. I mean, it would be nice if it went back to support, but difficult to say if it actually will do that. Um, plus, there was a flag here, too. Yeah, so it looks like a breakout here, uh, personally, and still a correction on this chart. But anyhow, those are just two of the some of the CFDs that are available, um, you know, this is something I'm just analyzing myself, not not trading myself. What I trade uh, is uh, primarily uh, forex, but we do want I do want to you know take a look at some of these because if you are interested, it is possible to trade if you think it's uh, for you. There is a lot of things you can uh, choose from, so up to you what you find uh, worthwhile. But here are a few of this, the CFDs right here in uh, EU and some of the US ones right here. And there's a whole list of uh, instruments you can choose from. Alrighty, folks. Well, if there aren't any questions um then um, we'll take a quick look at the webinars this week just go to admiralmarkets.com click on education and forex and cfd webinars if you're inter interested in the mt4 supreme edition plugin just go to metatrader supreme edition and uh, you can download that extra plugin with regard to the webinars uh, there are real-time daily trading ideas uh, at uh, 10 a.m gmt time and uh, Nena is going to take a look at live trading session with Nena. And I got a strategy webinar. And together, we're going to take a look at CFDs and equities on Thursday. So feel free to sign up for those. Uh, Pound New Zealand, definitely. Let's take a look at that. Let me use a new template. All right, there is a, let me start from the very scratch, uh, very top, I mean. We can put a fit from here to here to see what kind of targets price is approaching. And it is approaching a minus 272 target. 
So that could be creating some kind of retracement within this obvious uh, momentum, right, that we've seen in the last uh, last weeks, but also last days even on the pound regime. We saw an acceleration, continuation of this upside in the last uh, weeks. And it has reached the minus 272 target. That's something to be aware of, long-term moving average. With regard to the Keltner, it's kind of stopped at the Keltner, and here we had a break above it and a continuation. Looks like it's at a, due to, due to the target, I think it is at a, a, a moment where we should be careful. Not to say that it couldn't continue to the minus 61.8 target. It's definitely possible, all right? But probably best to wait for the break Either wait for um, a retracement, break, or we need to see an immediate push. If it does break or you know, continue immediately, I would need price to break above the minus 272 target for continuation up to the minus 61.8 target. Alternatively, if it starts to uh, move down a lot from here, that could be a reaction to the 272 target too. So we have to see how price responds to this level. Now, there is a bit of divergence, I think we spoke about that already, between these tops. All right. Let's take a look at the four hour chart. Probably a little bit divergence between these, chart, these tops, too, as you can see. So that is a bit concerning for a bit worrying. Oh, cats will see. Sorry, uh, Albert. We also take a look at the cats will see. Indeed, um, a bit concerning for the bulls at this moment. And uh, this, you know, New Zealand was a week, and I, you know, def I did trade your all your New Zealand last week. Not the pound and pound, pound out of pound New Zealand due to that divergence. Although we did get a continuation of the pound New Zealand for a higher high as well. Uh, I didn't feel that this one was, you know, as strong as the Euro New Zealand Euro odd because of the divergence on the higher type frames and the choppiness of, of the pound. But it did eventually make a higher high. All right. And it did have a sustainable breakout and continue. Although um, the Euro odd and Euro New Zealand were, were better in my view. But it did, did make that. But now, now that we have the break, there are a couple of these things in play. We have the minus 272 target. We got multiple divergences in play. So uh, I'm thinking whether, you know, how much is this going to retrace and how much is this going to correct? And that's something we never know, really. There are, I think, two most likely candidates. Obviously, not so surprising, maybe, is that either price kind of makes correction like that, then in that case, it's probably setting itself up for a new upside, or it starts to fly down more impulsively. In any case, I think that longs are not, not good in this spot, from my point of view. It's not a good spot. If anything, probably more worthwhile to find a tactical reversal trade in here. And we'll have to see, I think, how price responds to this, right? Um, is it a choppy move down? Typically, on average, the price should get down to S1 in the long-term moving average and the 190 round level, roughly, because of the divergence that we're seeing. I think that's kind of like the, let's say, minimum target that we can have in mind for, for this pound New Zealand. Um, we can put a line there like this. So on the daily chart... Now, even if this still is an uptrend on the daily chart, like this, some correction of this channel is basically a pretty neat channel. Uh, it didn't get all the way to the top of that channel, but I think this is a spot where some correction within that channel back to support is something that seems probable at this moment. 
And I'm not saying that the whole uptrend is necessarily toast. I, I think that uh, it really depends. There are reasons for it to, to, to be completed because of the divergence. Um, it doesn't have to. You see these divergences could could still take some, it could be one more retracement, one more push up, right? And we get double divergence, for instance. So I, I don't want to, I'm not a trader that, you know, uh, tries to claim that reversals will definitely happen or they will, uh, I think reversals need to always be approached with caution and, you know, careful, careful, yeah, careful uh, approach. But yes, yeah, some retracement, and then we'll have to see if price makes one more push up or whether indeed a bigger correction would occur. But that would have to probably be below the S1 and the support trend line before that becomes a little bit more likely. And then price could fall towards the long-term moving average of this daily chart, right? So we would probably then see like this, like an A, B, C play out, if that were to create a bigger correction. So this is the first target in my view. And then we have to see if it's indeed a B or still one more higher high. Uh, so from this four hour point of view, or one hour, Uh, let's see. We already had a break of this kind of rising wedge like that. And um, this could be an A, this could have been a B, and this could be a C. Reversals are always a little bit tricky to trade. Mm, I'm thinking how what the best could be at this moment. Um, let me take a look at the daily. I don't have any particular trade idea. Just looking at these charts, nothing pops in my mind at this moment how I would want to trade this reversal at this point, to be honest. I mean, you know, this break or kind of rising wedge, but that's behind us. So now we have to look at the future and at this moment, I am not sure. I think probably I'll just wait for the moment. I mean, theoretically, if it were to, depends on this daily candle, I think. If we have a good daily candle, maybe that's the best. I'm just thinking what, what would be to make the most sense. I think waiting for this daily candle probably to confirm its bearishness could be a good first step, probably. And then maybe waiting for a retracement of that candle. There could be some maybe trade ideas based on a retracement of that candle for a move down to the weekly pivot point and then perhaps an extension down to that S1. And that, that could be a bouncing spot. So maybe not today, but maybe based on today's daily candle. So if today flies down, hits the weekly pivot point, I'm not sure if it gets there necessarily today, but let's say you know, depending on how today's candle closes, let's say it pushes a little bit further like this, maybe a little bit of a bounce because of that trend line tomorrow, but we have a bearish candle and then we might get a continuation like this. So my my head is definitely bearish at this moment. It's just that you know, it is this whole kind of reversal kind of procedure and process sometimes takes time and uh, it doesn't look like I think it doesn't seem like a good moment right now, I guess. I mean, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I would just wait for today's daily candle. Yeah, I think that's probably at this moment, in my, my eyes, Probably the better step. So let's take a look at the cat swissy. And any upside, well, as I said, really, I would need to see price break, probably break above last week's high because otherwise it is ultimately, I think, more in a retracement mode. Um, cat swissy.
All right, there we go. Yeah, this one, it, it seemed like it was going to break, didn't it? Right, It was really threatening that support. And I'm not a big fan of trading the Swiss franc. I did think about trading this break. Ultimately, I didn't, though. I just, I don't even know exactly why. I think, I think uh, for some reason I was, I saw some, I think I saw a better currency. I think I traded the CAD against a different price. I'm just not a big fan of the Swiss franc. So <laughs> that's one of the reasons uh, from, from my view. But uh, yeah, it, you know, this, this breakout did go well. Uh, this, this kind of pullback continuation, anyone who thought about trading it here, maybe, you know, as, as of course, got strong momentum. So maybe this is a pullback for continuation. It's not a bad trade. I wouldn't stay in that because it ultimately failed to break here. And I would definitely have used this top to, to trail stop that and, and take the risk out of off the table. So if anyone took that trade right in here, uh, you know, I would personally be out right now because it's in my view it's a, a little bit um either either it, like even this break even this bounce is still acceptable in my view it bounces it bounces okay we have pullback pullback but then it has to break otherwise this is still i think too dangerous in the sense that it could still make a correction and just stay in this range in my view so like this Right, so it definitely it looked like it was going to break, but it didn't ultimately. So I think that this is that's still a triangle formation at this point, pretty decent strength behind it. So there's a good chance that this could break to the upside and move up actually. I don't have the oscillator here, but. Um, Yeah, there is some divergence between these tops. But we don't have divergence here. So one more higher higher, I don't think is is that that strange to ask. We've had a you see, we've yes, we do have divergence between these tops, but don't forget we do have a, a long and extended sideways move after that, too. And that's kind of like making that divergence less important because that's what we expect when we have divergence we expect a, a, a impulsive correction or we expect time to take care of the divergence so from this perspective time is taking care of that divergence so that is less kind of relevant at this moment and if you look at that weekly chart the oscillator still looks fine for one more higher high i think so the failure here to break even though that this was the third fourth yeah let's say third or fourth approach um you know, it's shifting my mind more from a bearish kind of correction to more like, okay, the bullish break might be coming soon. This is not a good moment to, to trade it, I think, in the sense that it's halfway at this moment. Um, depending on how on your viewpoint, maybe uh, it is still possible to trade because we just had actually a failure of the of the bearish break here like this. All right, so depending on how you know, aggressive you want to trade bounces, it could be if we get a good candle here, this four hour candle could be one thing to think about. These wicks here could have been maybe a bounce trade uh, based on this trend line and the, and the bigger bottom here. All right, so anyone in shorts here I think made sense, but when you see downside correction and kind of the, the potential for continuation, then you got to be aware that if it fails um, as a short, that you want to be careful with that, right? And if you see wicks like that, that the opposite could happen. If this candle posts, it, it could be a good breakout of this resistance rather than the break below support. And there is some okay space, I would say, to that top. I don't think I would trade it. I'm not really a big fan of the Swiss franc, as I just said. As this is just pure analysis at this moment from my side. Um, but yeah, there is some some space to that for, for a breakout, uh, sorry, uh, a continuation of this triangle pattern, I should say. And who knows, maybe in this case, the third attempt of this resistance spot or fourth, one, two, three, fourth, we might finally see 
a breakout, but to the down to the upside instead of to the downside. So uh, one way could be to take a little bit of profit in this zone, maybe leaving the rest up to leaving the rest open for a breakout to the upside. All right. So that's that's my two cents on the cash receipt. But let's see how this candle closes. And if it closes bullish, maybe a slight retracement of that candle and uh, up it can go. At this moment on the one hour chart, there's also a little bit of a channel. It's trying to break out of that channel. So if it pushes a little bit higher, it would be nice to get a little bit more breakout, maybe a pullback and the continuation seems like it's not a, a strange thing to see, to see happen. If it does do that like this, one way could be to look for a bullish candlestick pattern at that zone to kind of confirm a potential continuation. All right, so that's my two cents on uh, this cat swissy. All right, well, that will wrap it up. Uh, my, uh, my ideas for the moment, at least. Um, wish you all good trading. I uh, hope to see you uh, tomorrow, guys and girls, right in uh, these webinars. And um, see you soon. Cheers.